The i6 is a Soviet Tier 8 premium heavy tank. Plans for this vehicle were drawn up in the construction bureau of the Chelebinsk Kiro plant from December 1943 to the summer of 1944. Further development and the construction of the first prototype took place at the Ural Marsh plant. However, the vehicle had no advantages over the other heavy tank designs under consideration, and its armor was seen as inferior to the IS-4, so the IS-6 was not selected for production. Now before we get into some replay, let's just see the pros and cons of this vehicle. This tank has very good DPM and alpha that enables aggressive and fun gameplay. When playing this vehicle you have to be careful due to low ammunition capacity. The penetration on the shells is not that great, neither with the regular or premium shells. The gun has bad accuracy and the aim time is long. The mobility of the tank is decent for the armor that it carries. One thing to mention is poor view range and this tank gets outspotted easily. The armor on the tank is highly angled and it's good all around, especially if the tank is angled properly. Furthermore, there are no obvious frontal weak points and the driver's hatch is actually thicker than the upper plate. It is important to take into the consideration that this tank never gets into tier 10 battles due to its preferential matchmaking. In World of Tanks it sits at tier 8 and it has a premium matchmaking, but let's see what it can do in some gameplay. Hello guys and so welcome back to World of Tanks Ace Tanker series and as you can see today we'll be driving the IS-6 and driving the IS-6 for us is Sala and he is going to be playing on the map cliff and right from the bat I have to say this is probably one of the most beautiful matchmakers that you are going to get. Take a look at this, in the enemy team you have one tier 8 and you have a couple of tier 7s and more than half of the team is tier 6, so driving the IS-6 is going to be the best thing that you are going to see in this replay and well this is probably the best matchmaker that everybody can hope for. So yeah, the IS-6 has already said it's a tier 8 Russian premium heavy tank and it is a heavy tank at preferential matchmaking so you can expect to get into tier 9 games. And you can see that Sally is carrying only premium shells. I guess that this is okay if you are not trying to grind for the money, but probably this much premium shells is not that great. Not even for a premium heavy tank or premium account for that matter. So yeah, when driving this tank you should take some premium shells. That is a must because in tier 9 games 175mm on the gun is really not going to cut it. But in these kind of matches when you get the tier 7s and the tier 6s he could have easily played against these tanks with well just regular shells 175mm of penetration can go through any of these tanks even through the IS-3 if you are aiming the lower plate well if you are in front of the IS-3 and aiming below the lower plate now the IS-3 is probably the only tank that he needs to be careful against because any other of these tanks will have to get on his back or on his side if they want to penetrate. The armor on the i6 is legendary and well probably there is nothing more to say about it. Now he's in a good position, he already has one kill. He is advancing through this, I want to say the heavy side but really there is a lot of things that happen in this, uh, well lately in these games and medium tanks also like to rush this position on E3. So you can't really say this is a heavy or a medium side, but he is in a good position to take care of these tanks and he is fighting against the 25 as you can see, not enough penetration, just adding to the damage received here on the i6. Yeah, you can see it is calculating, I believe he has over 675 because when the enemy is not spotted it looks like it's not counting towards the block damage. Now the IS-3 is in a bad position, he is getting shot by the artillery, he is getting shot by the tanks that are behind the IS-6, so behind Sale, and as soon as he finishes off the IS-3, he is really left against nothing that can damage him, except for the artillery, so he still needs to be careful when playing against the artillery, but as you can see they are still losing, so it is 6-4 from the enemy team, and he needs to do a lot in this game if they want to win this one. 
Now the one and two line are secure, but as you can see, the heavy is on the other side. So the T29 and the KV85 have pushed through, and they are now in a good position to finish off the tier seven Panther and go into the friendly cap. Now the Skoda is in a bad position. He outplayed, he outstayed his welcome, and you can see that the I6 has no problem dealing with the tier sixes. Now you might argue that this is a well, just like catching the fish in the barrel, but really. There is still a lot, of, a lot of game to play here and you have to fight off still against the heavy odds if the enemy tanks are playing well together they can still finish this one and kill everybody on the friendly team. Now the tides are turning 76 as you can see here and well the i6 so Sally is in a good position to start hammering on these heavies that are advancing through the flank. Puts one into the ARL. The ARL is trying to hunt the Panther. It looks like that the Panther was able to fight off the invaders and finish off the T29 and I believe it was the KV1S. But now, yeah, cut it by the R ARL and you can see that the tank destroyers, so the enemy tank destroyers that were camped in the B1 and the a1 are just doing a great job here and they are turning this game around. Now for Saleh he is hunting on this DKP. The DKP is running away from the I6 as he should because he doesn't want to face this tank frontally. Jackson from the hill should probably now get side shots on the I6 but he is somewhere else doing something else and well he is not trying to kill the I6 now he cannot really penetrate from the front. So, as you can see, 11 to 7, and it looks like the enemy team is advancing towards the friendly cap. Take a look at the Churchill GC, and the Comet is rushing on the Nashorn. The two artillery are in a bad position there, they are going to get spotted. Outspotted by the enemy tanks that are advancing. And it looks like the artillery joins the fight, finishes off the Nashorn, goes for the friendly cap. So Sally really needs to do something if he wants to win this one. He gets the gun carriage, so the Churchill gun carriage. Fortunately this one goes into the tracks. He didn't really aim this one properly, he didn't let the aim circle to get fully on the gun carriage. And this is the first damage that he takes, so you can see there are tanks that can penetrate it. But it was a good angle for him to the lower plate. And just like that, it looks like he is left alone 1 versus 7. Probably if he was in any other tank he would have been a problem, but well, driving the I6 really gives him the chance to survive and just fight off against the rest of the tanks here. Now he wants to find a shot on the VKP. VKP is actually doing a good job here. He's not fighting the I6, he's trying to lure him out and just what what just happened there that was a quick turn on the gun okay oh, unfortunately he shoots the rock there and now he's in a bad trouble he has three tanks but take a look at this the 25 misses one the second one didn't penetrate the third one actually penetrates the artillery just fired the vk is trying to rush him doesn't be able to penetrate could he should take a shot on the artillery or does he take out the vk Taking a look at the VK, out aiming the VK, driving forward, shooting backwards, killing the VK, going for the Lorraine artillery. Now he's in a good position, he can shoot underneath the cupola of the T29. He shoots at the VK, unfortunately he doesn't kill the V sorry the Lorraine. Now he has Arl in front of him, Arl cannot penetrate. Goes forward, aiming on the ARL. Doesn't really get the shot, now aiming on the Lorraine. Gets the shot on the Lorraine, going towards the ARL. ARL bounces as well. And... Let's just reload. Reloads before the ARL and just like that. He was 1 vs 7, now he is 1 vs 2. He was in a bit of a pickle there. He got tanks shooting him in the back. But he was managing to finish off everything there and now there's the Jackson. Jackson really likes to climb it looks like he really likes those rocks aiming for the Jackson he cannot lift the gun to hit it 
And he needs to he still needs to be careful from the GV Panther artillery. So now driving forward, this is a bad position for him. The Jackson shoots him in the back. Luckily he has the small gun. And the artillery shoots him. This is bad. This is really really bad from the artillery shot. You can see that the artillery is still on the A1 probably. Now going for the Jackson. Uh, he wants to go for the Jackson. He wants to take out the artillery. The Jackson still in a good position to put the shots into the back of the I6. He should have turned well probably sooner and just try and shoot at the Jackson but he was trying to drive away as well to a safe cover from the artillery so yeah that, that's what he had to do and that's what he did. 8 kills so he needs to take care of the Jackson, he needs to take care of the GV. Good thing is that he can finish them off probably both of them with one shots. Only the bad thing is if the GV just appears in front of him he is going to well, we have to be quick about it because if the GV takes a snapshot on him, he is going to finish him off and win this one. Snapshots the GV and the Jackson is trying to find the angle on the shot. Cannot really find the angle. Also, Sally cannot find the angle with the I6 on the Jackson. For the 10th kill, will he be able to get it or will the Jackson take a couple of shots into his back and just finish him off? It looks like that Jackson is going down. Uh, I don't think this is probably the best thing to do with Jackson at this point because if he goes down the I6 will have the opportunity to catch him and just put a shot into him. No, Jackson is trying to flank him and yeah, this is the 10 kill. That's a GG and let's take a look at the post game stats. As you can see here as Sala got a plethora of medals, he got a Pulse medal, Cool Headed, Steel Wall, High Caliber, Top Gun, Kolbanov's medal for finishing 1 vs 7 and of course the Master Badger is Tanker. On the team score sheet we can see that he scored 1700 experience, 10 kills and over 4400 damage. In the detailed report we can see that he fired 25 shots of which 19 hit the target and 17 penetrated. Also he received 26 shots to a total of 2200 damage. And with the premium account he was able to score 38,000 credits even though he lost 120,000 credits to premium shells that he was firing. Now as always at the end the summary of what we saw in this gameplay. Even though he had the perfect matchmaker he didn't have the perfect team so he had to fight 1 against 7 at the end. He used all of the features of the tank, that's the good armor and that's the good gun when fighting in close quarters to finish off the tanks one by one. Now recently Wargaming introduced a new tier 8 heavy tank, the Defender, which probably outperforms the i6 in every way. But still due to his premium matchmaking the i6 has a lot of things to offer and as you can see it can carry you to a victory. As always guys, if you liked the video leave a like, if you didn't like the video you can leave a dislike. Leave a comment what you think about the i6 and leave a comment if you had any 1 vs 7 games that you won. Also if you don't know what to watch next you can watch the previous video with the Panzerkampfwagen aus J, probably one of the most OP tanks in World of Tanks. As always guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already you can do it now. Hope you guys like this one and I'll see you in the next one.